We assemble this kit with a hard body, all metal, lights, winch for 450 bucks, and we're here to tell you all about it. Curious? Tune in and find out more. So we did an unboxing of this kit from Cross RC and it got over 10,000 views in the first few days. So I think people are pretty curious what's going on here. So we put it together and we're here to tell you how it came together and you know what our first impressions are. So first of all, uh, it is a hard body right here and it is, it's amazing. It's got clear windows, obviously, nice in the rear. It's got a metal, uh, metal doors, a plastic cage, uh, all the details, uh, little diamond uh, metal sheet, a nice grill, the grill we painted ourselves, headlights, lenses. So this is all good. And one, one nice touch, oh, the weight is 693 grams. So 693 is pretty heavy, because that's just the front. The rear is probably another 300 grams, so you're probably looking at 1,000 grams. So uh, it's a heavy body, um, and most of it's in the front. And one nice surprise is the hood opens, and it's held by magnets. So two surprises there. It's got a little holder here. It's not hinged. It's just floating in there. So you can kind of do this, but then it'll, it'll, it'll eventually fall off. And given that the switch is in there, you always have to open this. Um, so it's a little, little detail that, was, that should not have been overlooked. So the body is, is pretty nice. It's not, uh, it's not scale, it's not a licensed body but you'll notice what they achieved is a very low floor plan. The, uh, the seats are very deep in there. It's very hard to do this on an RC car because usually all your electronics are right here. But they were able to do it and I'll have some uh, close-up shots of the interior. All the electronics are right here so you can't have a huge ESC or or receiver, it has to fit under that, that little cowling. You could paint this engine block too. It's got a winch, it's got a working winch. So it's got wiring from here to the receiver. It's got lights. Uh, and the lights are, are going here. So you gotta manage that wire to go in there. The body is attached to the, the chassis with four screws. So two in the bottom and two in front. Not easy, but not that hard either, and you don't have to do it that often. The, what do you call these? The sliders are some of the best in class I've seen. They're very high off the ground, and they're very low profile, and when they hit, they slide. They really work, very nice. Uh, you got a metal cage in the back, got a battery tray and a spare tire. Little luggage box that uh, you can actually store something in here, um, it's empty. Axle mounted servo, as you can see, not the greatest. Shocks that are fully metal and very nice. Metal everything. It's got a very small transfer case right here and that allows the body floor pan to, uh, to dip down very deep. Pumpkins are pretty decent size, not that bad. And then links to the belly right here. The shocks are angled. We are not quite sure why. We believe it's for scale for this style of vehicle, but it definitely affects performance. So observations, how does it work? 
or how does it look? We have another video showing you its performance. We already shot it, uh, but it might get too long on this one. So we'll just tell about the, the key observations that we have. Oh, the switch is over here, by the way, for your receiver. So that's very handy to have a switch. Just need to open the hood, flick. Okay. So observations. The first one is the battery. The battery is kind of a pain. And the reason is, so it's got this system where the, there's a module here, there's a storage box, and uh, the storage box is held in place by the rear tire. So you always have to do this. Not a big deal, but the painful part is the storage box is not big enough. So when you take that off, this lifts off. It's got a little lip here, and it reveals our battery in there. Okay, so the problem part is the 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 store the battery compartment is very small. So this is a three cell, twenty two hundred milliamp hour. So it's, it's a pretty tiny battery, but it barely fits in here. It's too thick, so this slip really can't slide in. You almost, we have to slide it in together, and then um, uh, the wires the wires are okay now that they're sitting down. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they, they kind of uh, take up the room. Uh, it makes it hard to close. So as it is, you know, this, this battery doesn't really fit. Um, you know, we have to force it in and it's kind of lift, lifted up a little bit. So if you have a big battery, no chance. If you have a tiny battery, tiny three cell, maybe. And you really should be using a three cell on this one because the motor is not that strong and uh, it could use that extra 30% in power. So that's the battery situation. The so the other situation is the steer the axle mounted servo. You know, people say, ah, oh, why is it axle mounted? Should be chassis mounted. I think they did it for space. You know, there's just no room in there for a chassis mounted servo. Uh, so they went for the old solution, which is axle mounted. And it's fine. It works fine. There's no bump steer. Bump steer is when you do this and it, it starts steering on you. A lot of three-link suspensions have that with Panhard. Uh, this one, it, it doesn't do that because it's right in there. But the problem is when you are crawling, this is right in the line of fire. So we, put, we made sure to put the screw, the arm behind the, ar behi behind the arm, uh, the steering behind the arm. Uh, there's, in the front, there was just no chance. And this hits a lot. So we only had a couple runs, but it's already all scratched up and you can kind of see it. So the key here is to make sure there's a smooth surface so it'll, it'll slide off. And they should have, they're going to do this, they should have included a, a um, whatchamacallit, a, a guard, kind of a servo guard right there. So a little bit of an issue there. We put a very nice Savox servo in it. Steering is very good. So you can see. It hits the axle. Maybe that can be trimmed a little bit or have a little bend. Yeah, it would be better if they had a a bent uh, on the a bend on that link for better clearance. Uh, it does not have Ackerman steering, meaning Ackerman is when you have uh, more angle on the inside wheel than the outside because. The radius of your turn is actually tighter on the inside wheel. You know when you're when you're talking small numbers, small uh, tight, very tight steering radius. So it does kind of rub a little bit when you're doing that, and it turns more on one side than the other. So it's nowhere near, it not nowhere near the steering radius of a uh, of a uh, TRX4. It gets kind of close to the to an axle, but not quite as good. The it's towed in a little bit out of the box that can be adjusted uh, and you have to put spacers but they should at least straighten that out um, from the factory. Okay so that's another observation. The winch is, is it seems fairly useless because uh, a lot of winches have a servo to, to pull the body and you, you've seen videos <laughs> where the winch will pull the whole vehicle up with, the, with its power. This one can barely pull its uh, weight uh, on carpet horizontally. So understandable because it's so tiny. So maybe it's more for not decoration but suggestion. 
As I said, uh, the sliders are awesome. This cage is metal, really cool. Transfer case is pretty nice, nice and handy. All metal. Okay, and then um, suspension articulates really well. Nice flex on this, on this bad boy. So, there's the good stuff. Where's the bad stuff? And you'll see it in our, in our running video. So, first bad stuff is, you know, the angle of the rear shocks. You know, it, um, it makes it harder to articulate the rear because you are working not straight up and down like most RCs that you have. It's a big angle. So when you, when you push the weight of the vehicle, this doesn't, um, doesn't compress all of its geometry towards the shock. Only like 60% of it or 70% will go in. Articulation, it does pretty well. That's when you know, the shock is, 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 is it's at its best. So the front has a nice sag, you know, maybe 30% sag sag is sometimes known as droop but droop is the other way of looking at it um, how much your 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 shock hangs down so um, when you when you when you set the body down it it sits down about 30 percent which is pretty darn good maybe 40 percent the problem is the rear really doesn't uh, because it's so light on the rear, sometimes it doesn't even move. So it's an unbound suspension. I think they put the same springs on the front and the rear. And that's kind of a, an issue because the rear is much lighter. So looking at my handy dandy cage, uh, my, my handy cheat sheet, 41% of the weight is on the rear and 59% is in front, 40, 60. That's pretty severe front loaded. And I'm not sure, and that's pretty good, maybe a little too much, but definitely you gotta adjust the suspension so at least it will sag level. And that's why when you see this vehicle a lot, you know, it's always like tipping forward. It's because the suspension is not balanced. So something that can be fixed, some people straighten out the shock, some people put lighter springs, definitely can be addressed. Another one is the location of the links. So this, usually this, your center belly is the lowest part uh, of, the, of the vehicle in the center. Here the links are, are the lowest part. So the links are going to hit a lot. Or they're, they're the ones that are going to hit. And these bolts used to be on the outside per the instruction. And we got a situation where it got caught and it bent the, the little holder, the little metal frame holder for the links. So we put, we put it in the inside. So easily solved, but they should have done that themselves. We're gonna give you two of our greatest concerns. So great articulation, impressive approach angle. This bumper is awesome because not only is it low clearance, but it's got a nice slippery finish and it's got some nice angles. Every time you hit a rock with it, the rock just kind of just slides out, slides away unlike a lot of our other vehicles where it just, it's like a dagger. So almost perfect angles, very hard to upgrade these, these, uh, these bumpers. So that's a, a plus. Okay, the biggest, the two biggest concerns we have is slop. There's a lot of play in the drivetrain. So you see this, the motor's not moving. So this is just play uh, on the drive shafts and on the axles. So let me show you a little better what it is. So I'm gonna hold this tire and I'm gonna move this. So from this wheel to this wheel, there's play in the axle and that's demonstrated by that. And then from here, you can see there's, more, there's play in the axle too. Like that way. And then here on the drive shaft, there's play too.
And finally, the motor, the gears, they just don't seem that robust. Um, we're gonna try to open it up, but they look like tiny little gears and there's no clutch. So what's protecting your motor, your gears when you get hung up and, and you gas it. So it's not a very powerful machine, but on 3S, you can know you have some torque there. Um, that is a major kind of thing for us to watch out for. Can the motor protect and gearbox protect itself? There you go. Thanks a ton.